by now, you all know what's going to be our theme for today. Not that you would have known had you been watching ABC, NBC, or even Fox for that matter. They were too busy talking about the resignation of Mr. Shinseki and of Jake Carney and things like that. I didn't hear one single word on any of the major networks or in the newspaper about the Ascension, which we celebrated this past Thursday. <coughs> Ascension Day is really not that popular. It's not like Christmas, or even Easter for that matter. In fact, Ascension Day wasn't really uh, something that the disciples were excited about either. We picked that up as we read the story here. They had, they had spent over a month since Jesus had risen from the dead. First they were pretty skittish. You remember in the upper room when they were meeting in Jerusalem and Jesus just came through the wall. The Bible says they were afraid. Jesus said, peace be with you, and, and they kind of settled down into a routine, and things were really going quite well. They kept having these serendipitous meetings with Jesus, sometimes in small groups, sometimes with large groups. The Bible says one time there were 500 people together meeting with him, and Jesus was talking to them about the kingdom. And so they got this great idea. Lord, they said, are you going to restore the kingdom at this time. I mean, hey, that would be great, wouldn't it? Just stay here, Jesus, and, and let's, let's sit down now with Pontius Pilate, the guy who washed his hands, and let's have it out with him. Or how about, how about the crowd who said, crucify him? See what they have to say now. What if Jesus had stayed? Wouldn't that have been great? I mean, just think of all the leadership conferences he could have led. <laughs> you wouldn't have to guess which one to go to. Think about all the church squabbles he could have fixed. Wow, wouldn't that be great? Well, idle speculation, you may say, and that's true. The Bible simply tells us that after 40 days, he ascended into heaven, and a cloud hid him from the sight of the disciples. And not only that, the Bible says no human eye will see him again until he returns. Until he comes again to judge the living and the dead. That's what the Bible teaches us. But here's the thing. Far from considering this to be something detrimental or something harmful to our lives as Christians, the Bible tells us that Christ's ascension is a fundamentally good thing. It is to our benefit. In fact, it is essential to your life as a Christian and mine that Jesus ascended into heaven. I want to talk about three different things. And I didn't pass out any notes. I didn't make up notes. But if you're a note taker, here's the three things that we're going to be looking at today. The benefits of the ascension. First of all, it means amnesty from the past. Second, it means assurance for the future. And third, it means assistance for the present. So let's begin by talking about amnesty from the past. When we talk about our salvation, we usually say something like this. I know that Jesus died for my sins. And now everything is good and I'm going to have it. people in the days of Jesus who died on crosses just like Jesus. 
Jesus did. So if that's all that had happened, if Jesus had just died on a cross, period, would it have really done us any good? And the answer is no. Okay, we see. He died on the cross and he rose again from the dead. And we might even go to the scriptures to point that out because the Bible says in Romans 4.25 He died for our sins. He was raised to life for our justification. But that is still incomplete. And what's missing from that equation is the ascension. Listen to what the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 5. He who descended, that is to say, the one who came down from heaven, who was born in a manger by Bethlehem, who died on a cross, who rose again from the grave, he who has descended has now ascended into heaven. And when he ascended, he did not ascend by himself. He led, Ephesians says, he led captivity captive in his train. That means to say, he brought with him all those for whom he had died. He brings them all before his heavenly Father and he says, Father, here are all the ones for whom I have died. Death and sin no more have any authority over them because I died for them. And I have given them amnesty from the past. No more shall sin have dominion in their life. No more are they to be condemned? For I have led them as my captives. They are mine. And I bring them with me as I come to you now in the throne room of heaven. He presents them to his Father as his very own sons and daughters. world can separate you from the love of God in Jesus Christ. He owns us body and soul. And he has brought us before the throne room of God. I like the way one writer says, he says that this is a matter of heavenly bookkeeping. I know there are some bookkeepers here, but this is a matter of heavenly bookkeeping. Uh, it's, it's only going to be on, on that final day when Jesus comes back that we're going to really grasp the impact of what took place here. You know, that's how it is. Bookkeepers do their work all year long, but it's not until the end of the season, right? Until you have all the bottom line figured out, all the taxes figured out, that's when you know where you're at. That's the way it is in our life. Not going to be till the final day that you and I know the full impact of this bookkeeping venture of Jesus Christ. But what's important for you and I to know is that he went to heaven and in the book of life he wrote down not guilty. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your name your name has those words behind it in the book of life. Not guilty. He gives us amnesty from the past by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. We can therefore experience his peace today. We all want peace. 
We all want peace to take place in the world. We want an end to the fighting in Afghanistan, an end to the fighting in Syria, an end to all the jabbing back and forth and the political mouthing that goes on in our own country, and all the fighting that goes on between people. We hear it every day. Somebody's getting shot someplace. Gangs are fighting. We want an end to it all. We want peace. But nothing. Nothing in this world, not all the money in the world, not all the education, not all the power, not all the politicians, nothing can give us peace except Jesus Christ. That's why the Catechism has that little phrase in there. Don't seek the things on this earth. They're not going to give you peace. But seek the things in heaven, Christ is at the right hand of God. Because only in Him can we receive the peace of God that passes all understanding. But you can begin to experience that peace right now. And that's the good news. No matter what is coming up in your life, no matter what you face this week, you can now begin to experience that peace of God because of what Jesus has done in giving you amnesty from the past. But there's more than that. The second accomplishment of the ascension is he gives us assurance for the future. He went ahead and he not only wrote those words, not guilty, behind your name and mine, but he put another word there, and that word says, place reserved. Place reserved. You know, after I left Sunday so many years ago, we went down to California. And I got to tell you, I love the weather in California. It's great. And uh, in the middle of the winter one time, my brother lived up in Ontario, Canada, where it was terrible cold that winter, lots of snow. He and his wife decided to come and pay us a visit. And we thought, well, this would be really a nice time to give them a good dose California weather. And so we got on the phone and made a reservation with a nice place in Palm Springs. And we went there on that particular day and walked into the place and I said, my name is John Van Skeepen. Now they didn't have a book, they had a computer, but they turned on the computer, they looked in the computer and they said, yeah, we have your name right here. We have rooms reserved for you. Fantastic. We had a great time. Now listen to what the Bible says in John 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And I will come back and take you to be with me so that you may be where I am. <clears throat> what unspeakable comfort there is in those words. No wonder, no wonder that they are read so often at the bed of a sick person or at the time when a loved one dies. What comfort. Redemption was accomplished on the cross but it was applied to us through the power of the ascension of Jesus Christ. I go to prepare a place for you, Jesus said, for you. Do you have that assurance for the future? It is my prayer that you do. No matter what your stage in life is today, that you have that assurance that you have a place reserved in heaven. The Bible says this in Ephesians 2, God raised us up and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming age he might show us the incomparable riches of his grace. Folks, we haven't seen the half of it yet. I don't think we've even seen this much yet. 
but that comes with the incomparable riches that are ours in Christ Jesus. And he goes on to say in Ephesians, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit, guaranteeing our full inheritance to the praise of his glory. Let that sink in. Your place has been prepared in eternity. Your inheritance has been guaranteed thanks be to the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing, not even death, nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Third, the ascension of Jesus not only gives us amnesty from the past and assurance for the future, but it gives us assistance in the presence as well. And there are two particular assistance programs that I want to point out to you that are given to us through the ascension right now. And we need it. We need it. First of all, Jesus pleads our cause. Have any of you here done any building? I know Andrew's a builder up there. You know, Andrew, you ever have to have some zoning changes when you're doing building? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And can that sometimes be a problem? It's sometimes a very big headache. Sometimes it is. And wouldn't it be nice if when you had to have a change in the zoning, you could say to somebody, uh, you know people in high places, can you help me out? <laughs> well, I want to tell you something. We have, we have a friend in the highest place. <laughs> Jesus, who is our ascended Lord, is ever interceding for us the right hand of God. He is at the place of authority. That's what that word right hand means. It's the place of authority, the place of power. And yet, the Bible says, he has taken our flesh with him into heaven. We are one. He is our brother. He pleads your cause and mine. Isn't that great? You know, life is tough. I don't say that because I want us to walk around with a grump all the time. But life is tough. There are a lot of things that happen every day around us and in our own lives that make us suck in a big breath and say, oh, Lord, what's going on here? You know what it is? Because the Bible tells us Satan is going around like a roaring lion. He will do his best no matter how long you live, no matter where you are, what you're doing, he will do his best to cut you down at the knees and to bring you down. That's his function. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. He is evil. And he will do his best to destroy you. And to destroy the world around us, which God has made. And that's why it's so good to know that we have assistance. We have one who is always pleading our cause every day. You've got to always go to him and say, I know where you are. You are in the highest place. I need you. As that old song says, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. And he is interceding for you. If you believe that's good news, will you say amen? <laughs> that's great news. It is great It's not just a wonderful comfort. But it's a tremendous challenge for us also. We 
must never forget that Jesus reigns as king not only over you, not only over me, but over the whole world. Over every square inch of our world, as Abraham Kuyper used to say. Over all of our society. Whether you're a teacher, whether you're a plumber, whether you're a truck driver, whether you're an accountant, whether you're a farmer, whether you're a homemaker, whatever it is you do, Jesus is Lord in that area. And he is in the process of restoring his entire universe. And because the Lord we proclaim is the ascended Lord and yet at the same time the one who died and carries in his hands the wounds of the cross. We must know that his sacrificial love must be at the center of our lives every day as well. <coughs> Excuse me. All that you and I do, we do under the cross, under the sign as we follow in the footsteps of the Ascended Lord. I mentioned earlier that the Catechism says we must, we must not make this world the goal of our lives. But we are, until God calls us home, we are living in this world. We must be careful that we become and some have said, so heavenly minded that we are no personal good. We are called to live out our lives here under the cross of Jesus. To follow in the footsteps of the suffering Savior. But the Bible assures us that because of Jesus' ascension into heaven, not only is he ever interceding for us, but he has also sent us a helper, the Holy Spirit. And that's the second part of the assistance program that you and I have for our everyday life. He has given us his Holy Spirit. Jesus said it is good for us. It is good that, that it is good for you, he said to his disciples, that I am going. But I will not leave you as orphans. I will send out my Holy Spirit to be with you. The counselor who I will give you. He is with us always. Next week, we're going to celebrate Pentecost. We'll talk more about the ascension, I mean the, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit at that time. Let me just say a couple of things. The Holy Spirit not only universalizes the gospel, but revolutionizes believers. Our lives must be turned upside down for him as we follow in Christ's footsteps. The Holy Spirit not only brings men and women to faith, but the Holy Spirit is also the one who calls us to be faithful witnesses to our ascended Lord Jesus. The Holy Spirit exalts Christ as the only standard for righteousness, truth, justice, and love in all things. And that must be the standard that we follow in our lives as well. Today, brothers and sisters, today we are still living in that in-between time. How long will it go on? I don't know. <coughs> Lots of people have guessed. Last year,
year when we were down in Alameda, I lived just a couple of blocks away from Harold Kim. I'm sure that name rings a bell to many of you. He wrote several books about when Jesus was going to come back. It was in 1993, 1994, and I was again 208 or something like that. Thought he had it all figured out. He was a great uh, engineer. He knew his math very well, but I'm afraid he forgot some of the basic teachings of the Bible. Jesus himself said, no man knows. No man knows the day when Jesus will return. Simple as that. I don't know how long it will be. We're still in the in-between time. But this I do know. That we are called upon by the word of God to live as children of the ascended king. That means that we are to love as he has loved us. To love one another even in difficult times. Because we know that he is king of kings and lord of lords and he is coming again. We are called upon to love because the fruit of the spirit is love. And he has poured out his spirit in your heart and in mine. We are called to live with joy filled hope. Because... The Spirit of God reigns, and we know Jesus is coming again. He who intercedes for us daily has guaranteed us a place in heaven with him. For we can be filled with hope, even in the darkest days. That doesn't mean we don't weep. That doesn't mean we don't sorrow. But it means that we always have hope because we know we have a place reserved with Jesus. And even as we fight against sin each and every day, we also have this blessed assurance. Our God reigns. Amen? Our God reigns. He is King of Kings. And Lord of Lords in thee. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the blessed assurance that is ours. That our past has been dealt with. We have, we have an ascended Savior who has gone before us and opened the book of life. We have a Savior, Lord, who has prepared a place for us. The one who is with us each and every day. Not only as the one who intercedes for us, but as the one who has given us his spirit to be with us. So may we follow you, Lord, the crucified, risen one, with joy, with hope, as we live lives of love, in a world that is yet filled with pain and turmoil because of sin. But we know that one day, one day every tear will be wiped away. One day, death and pain and sorrow will be removed. The day when Jesus comes again. Come, Lord Jesus. Come quickly, we pray. Amen. Amen.